Hey, Lee Show. I'm first excited to welcome my co-host, Paul Hollis, author of the Holloman series, owner of Holloman Publishing and American May VA. Paul, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I, I'm really excited today. We have a, a wonderful Christian author and uh, Gracie Lynn, and she's going to tell us about her works today. Welcome. Thank you. Hey, Thank Gracie, you. thanks for stopping by again. Yeah. We're going to kind of go delve into the devotional and talk about yeah. words of wisdom and how the second book of the devotional is coming out in a couple of weeks, but just talk about the first book and people could pre-order the second book very soon. Go okay. ahead. Yes. Um, well, the first book is basically starts about talking about how I was about 10 years ago. I was kind of messed up and at 50 years, I'm 60 years old right now. At 50 years old, I decided to take like an analysis of my life and I realized a lot of my things were going well. But the one thing that was not going well was my pursuit of love. And so I asked God, uh, what was the big deal about premarital sex? Because I didn't feel like it was that big of a deal. And then God told me his story of how he was looking for intimacy within the, within the structure of a marriage and how the way I was living was basically breaking his heart. And so, I mean... His story, I write, write about the story that he told me in my book. And I write about how I asked him to change me. And in an instant, I was changed. And this is something I'd struggle with all my life because I've been a Christian all my life. But I'm also a very passionate person. I love intimacy. I love, you know, all the physicalness of being in a relationship. I love that. So this was a very big change for me to go from somebody who loved that kind of life to say, okay, I don't want to do that anymore because I know it hurts you, God. So take the desire away. And the desire for premarital sex was taken away. The desire for a loving marriage was not. I still have that desire. The desire for good relationships with men that are just friends, I still have that desire. I still like looking at handsome men. Who doesn't? You know, at least for me, I do. So I like all that. But I don't, I don't have the desire to do it in the wrong way anymore. And that is where the book starts. And then it goes into different things of, that I had experienced when I was dating. Um, different things that you, happen, that you happen across online, which many times there's on, online scams. So I write about one of the guys that I kind of felt for that was an online scam. Um, and I put a link in there to some different standards as to how to how to determine how to respond to these kind of people so you know um it's it's book of boundaries and it's book of wisdom as to how to handle the dating world especially if you're a christian and then and that's very important the dating world is not an easy world to deal with and to make those changes and then to figure out if you're Christian and you want to have a serious relationship which leads to marriage before sex, even then through your second marriage or wherever it is, that's yeah. a challenge in this world today of the very quick hookup type dating scene. So this yeah. book kind of brings out conversations that are that you've been sharing with your friends in this book, and it's been helpful for them because they're going through the same stuff. Yeah, yeah. One of my friends, she read the book and she said, boy, she wished she had had this when she first got divorced because it gives you kind of like, and the way I write, I try not to preach. I just tell stories. So it gives you guidance, but it gives you guidance in a very subtle and loving way. It doesn't give you like the condom. I try to, I try to step back from condemnation because I don't want somebody thinking I'm preaching to them. I'm just telling them stories. And th and that's the 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 process people are dealing with. And uh, did you in your book talk that online dating is the best way to do this or not? Well, dating apps. For me, so I know some people that have met their their one and only through online dating. For me, I believe because of my um, Christian walk, I believe for me, I will most likely meet my man um, that I will marry in church because that is where. My heart is that is where my goals align with. And that's just for me what makes sense. For me, online dating doesn't make sense anymore. So I don't do it anymore because last time I did it, um, my friend of mine taught me to get on match.com. And last time I did it, I was like, 
I'd be writing in book and I'd be like writing in my book. I'm like, oh gosh, I suppose I should check my messages because I might have a few messages. And I did. So it was not something I look forward to. Whereas before, before I had that time with God, I mean, I would come home from work and that's the first thing I'd go to is my computer to see what kind of messages did I have? Did anybody want to take me out for dinner? Did anybody want to take me to a movie? Do you want to take me here? Do you want to take me? There was all about, you know, the experience without the love. Right. And 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 I want I want love with this. No, and the, and that's that's the the challenge, right? Yeah, is going yeah. through that process to find the right person. Who do you looking for yeah. to understand you when they're not showing their true persona from the beginning? And so, reading that book so that Christians out there uh, understand that you know got to find another Christian, and it's yeah, not easy exactly. in this dating world to do that. And that's the whole thing about being unequally yoked. I mean, I will say this. I was in Italy um, last November, met a guy there from Australia, and we hit it off. We didn't get physical because I didn't allow him to, but we actually truly both told each other that we loved each other by the end of the week. But he was Hindu. I was Christian. We were both very devout in our in our religion, so I thought, you know, when I came back, I really missed him and mourned over him, maybe like a week, two weeks to a month. And I thought, you know, the reality of this on a day-to-day -day basis would most likely, likely not be something that would work. Right. Because we were coming from two such opposite ends of the spectrum. Although Hindu religion is very, very, very um, accepting, I think, of of. Christian belief system, because I taught him about the belief system. He said, yeah, they believed in Christ just in a different way than we do. So I think there would be, would have been some compromise there, but I just think when you have, when you have that, and that's one of the things about dating is when you have goals and you have standards, you need to kind of make sure that the other person aligns with those. Right. And then that's the problem, but then find Christians. So there's a hard checklist for you. That's why church have you had luck from your book talking about it and finding your mate in church? I have not had luck yet, but I tell you what, I have quite a few friends who have found their one and only in church. And this is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh marriages. I mean, down the line. Yeah, have they, have they helped you? Have you been able to help them for your book? Um, no, that, the, my my first book in the series just came out in January, so I I don't have a long history of helping yet, but um the two people that have read my book that have given me input on uh, impact or input on it have said that they felt it was very helpful for them. Yes. Yeah. So definitely getting it into the churches, especially when you're looking at, uh, you know older women, the fifty and over dating with men and different things. I think that's a perfect opportunity in these big churches and where you live because yeah. it's a bigger population than what some people are dealing with in other cities for sure yeah, and the, the thing too is this book is about is something that crosses into like when my girlfriend the girlfriend that said that she read it said she really wished she had gotten this when she was first divorced i mean it is good a book that is beneficial also for teenagers for people who are newly married or newly divorced as they're young, it's a book for anybody. Yeah, it crosses all the generational lines. Fantastic. Now, what about your second book in the devotional? Is it the same? It's all books about dating, right? Uh, yeah, the, all the, all these devotional books are actually taken from a blog that I wrote over a uh, course of eight years. And um, the blog, initially when I started the blog, I had a lot of um, anger and bitterness uh, from something that happened in family court between me and my ex-husband. And so it was pretty, pretty dark. But as I started working through that, as you get led, like I can even see as I walk, read through all the posts, as I go further and further away from that point in time, that there's a lot more spiritual enlightenment. There's a lot more hope. There's a lot more wisdom. There's a lot more, okay, I'm going to forgive this because, you know, it's not worth holding on to. Um, just all, all the, the, I just, I can just see my my whole you know, heart changing as I kept writing and writing and writing. And um, that, so I have, the second book is 
probably more, um, I'd say more defined, but more also more compassionate because it's further away from that it's, point. It's seeing you grow. And that's where yeah. people need to check out the devotional. And does each chapter have questions to ask? Yes, yes. Each 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 devotional has questions to ask. I have a Bible verse and then questions to reflect upon. So to try to get people to, you know, to examine their own lives as I examine mine. Exactly. So. All right. Well, we appreciate it, Gracie. Thanks for again. People could check you out. Best place is Amazon. Going. Yeah. Amazon. Amazon. And then in the 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 series is called Just One, The Dating Dilemma. And it is in my Words of Wisdom series of books. All right. We appreciate it, Gracie. Thanks again. You're welcome. You're listening and watching The Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.